All right. So, chapter five. Chapter five. And we're balancing equations today, which may be something that some of you have done in high school or other classes. And for others, this might be completely new. Either way, you're going to be fine. You're going to learn today. All right. So, law of conservation of mass. This is what our friend Antoine Lavoisier had to say about that. We may lay it down as an incontestable axiom that in all the operations of art and nature, nothing is created. An equal amount of matter exists both before and after the experiment. Upon this principle, the whole art of performing chemical experiments fits. That's a whole lot of talking to say that matter is never created or destroyed in any chemical or physical change. That's law of conservation mass in English. Do we need to know the guy from the first slide? Antoine Lavoisier, I probably wouldn't ask you about him specifically. The total mass of the reactants is equal to the total mass of the products. Lavoisier is my husband's favorite scientist. Because every self-respecting scientist has a favorite. His favorite is Lavoisier. never created, never destroyed. So you cannot create matter, you can't destroy it by a reaction or by a physical change. If you have a reaction that takes place, the total mass of your reactants before the reaction is going to equal the total mass of your products after the reaction. In other words, the amount of matter in the universe is a constant.
You form bubbles and you're not heating it. Uh, let's see, this one is also a color change. Here would be releasing heat and forming a precipitate. So all of those would be examples of actual chemical reactions. Okay, so this is the language of chemistry, right? We write, we speak chemistry in here. We write formulas, we name chemical compounds. And so a chemical equation represents a chemical reaction. So you can think about it like shorthand. All right, you could represent this reaction by drawing out all the little atoms and what they form. But that's kind of time consuming. What's a faster way to represent a reaction? Using, we learned how to do it last week. Oh. Formulas, right, you write formulas. So you're always gonna have an arrow involved. You're always gonna have some formulas written out. Okay, so the stuff that we have on this side, we call it the reactants, all right? So here's the symbol CH4, there's what it looks like. O2, there's what it looks like, all right? So these guys we typically refer to as reactants. And what is that arrow pointing to? What do we call that? Yields. Yields, yep, that's what the arrow means, it means yields. And then what do we write on this side of the arrow? What it forms. What it forms, and we call those the products. Okay, so reactants are what you begin with, Products are what you end up with. Okay? So you start out with your reactants. This arrow stands for the word yields or produces, and you end up with products. The states of matter are always put as subscripts. What's little g stand for? Yeah. Gas, all right, it stands for gas. What symbol would I use if it were a liquid? L. Lowercase l, and if it were solid, we'd use a lowercase s, right? So anytime you see something in parentheses written, written next to it, that's telling you what state of matter it is. And then we use coefficients. These are numbers that we put in front of a formula. And notice, what is this two telling me? How many, right. If there's not a coefficient, what do we assume that the number in front of it is? One, right. So there's one methane, there are two O2s, there's one CO2, and there are two H2Os. And the reason we put these coefficients is to show that we're following the rules of the law of conservation of mass. What after the 4 on the hydrogen? What? The CH4? Mm -hmm. Can you add it in together? The four? Well, there are four hydrogens on this side, and there are two times four hydrogens on this side. That's what we're doing today, we're learning how to balance it. Okay, now this is where students can make a lot of mistakes. So I want to make sure you understand the difference between a subscript and a coefficient. Okay, it's really, 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 really important. A subscript is part of the formula. Okay, this is telling me that I've got two hydrogens for every one oxygen. Okay, subscripts are telling you how many atoms of each are in the formula versus a coefficient tells you how many of that molecule you have. So if I want to represent the fact that I've got two water molecules, do I change the formula or do I put a coefficient in front of it? You put a coefficient in front of it, okay? It's really, 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 really important. If I've got H2O, and I want to tell the person, hey, 
I've got two H2O molecules. Here's what you do not do. Do not change this to H4O2. Okay, because is that water now? Is that still water? No way. That's it's all melts. It's four hydrogens for every two oxygens. That's not water. Okay, if you want to show a reader that you've got two H2Os, you put a coefficient of two in front of it. Because if we start changing formulas, we've created new substances. We don't want to do that. If we're trying to communicate how many we have, you've got to use a coefficient. Don't ever, under any circumstance, change the formula. Is that usually what happens when a chemist blows up something? You create new substances, you are having a reaction. Okay, does everyone see the difference between a coefficient and a subscript? Coefficient tells you how many, subscript tells you how many atoms are in the unit. Okay, so, you know, if we have this symbol to represent a person, and we want to show that we've got 10 people, or 5 people, what will we do? We put a coefficient in front, right? You would not start adding heads and bodies and legs and toes and stuff, right? Because this is not a person anymore. This is some sort of, I don't know what, right? If you start adding heads and stuff, that's no longer a person. But if I want to show that I've got four people, I just put four and then I'm going to Okay? I would not want to be a um, recipient of that thing. That would be an interesting thing. Okay? So here are the steps in balancing an equation. You're going to make a reactant product table, and I'll teach you how to do that. And then you're going to make both sides of the table equal each other using coefficients, not by changing formulas. If you change formulas, you've broken the rules. You go to jail. about the clues. Let's go through an example. So, you write out your reaction and you leave yourself some blanks for the coefficients. Alright? So, what are my reactants here? It's H2 and O2 and what's my product? H2O. So, you make yourself a table with reactants on one side and products on the other side. And you write your atoms in the same order. Okay, if you write them as HO over here and then OH over here, it's going to be really hard to read straight across and compare them. So always write them in the same order. And how did I know that I had two hydrogens to start out with? The subscript, right. And I knew that I had two oxygens because of the subscript here. I knew that I had two hydrogens here, and I knew that I had one oxygen here. So fill it in with your initial information. Now the goal is to make the number of hydrogens on the left equal the number of hydrogens on the right, and the number of oxygens on the left 
equal the number of oxygens on the right. Now the only way that we can do this is by adding coefficients. Now I notice that my hydrogens are balanced, my oxygens are not. If I just change the formula and put a 2 right there, would that work? No. no. Because H2O and H2O2 are not the same thing. H2O, good to drink, nice and safe. If you drink concentrated hydrogen peroxide, you're dead. I've had chemical burns from 30% hydrogen peroxide. So it should be H2O. So what do we do? We put a coefficient. What number do I want to change the, work, the oxygens on the product side to? A two. a 2. So I put a 2 on the spot, and I've got to distribute that 2, just like in math. Okay, if I put a 2 right here, I've got to distribute it, just like in an algebra class. So 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 1 is 2. All right, great. I balanced my oxygens, but now my hydrogens are out of whack. So now what do I need to do? Put a 2 in front of the hydrogen on the reactant side. Right. And then distribute it. And now you compare. Four hydrogens, four hydrogens. Two oxygens, two oxygens. So you're done. Does everyone see how we do this? Where do you initially get the two that's in front of the... Uh, product. This? The little one, the blue one up in the blank. I put that there to make the oxygens balance, and to make the hydrogens balance out. No, we take the oxygen balance. Excuse me. My oxygens are out of balance. I can't turn a, a one into a two. So I put a two in front of it and I distribute it. Wouldn't, wouldn't it put that in front of that? Wouldn't that make it 4H and 2O, which no, it's telling me you've got two H2O molecules. Remember the stick person? You put a four in front of stick person, that means you've got four people. So if you put a, a coefficient in front of it, that's telling the reader two H2 molecules react with one oxygen molecule to produce two H2O molecules. If it makes more sense, draw it out. If you need to draw it out, it works out the same way. H2 looks like that. O2 looks like that. And we're producing H2O. Okay, so my reactants and my products. How many hydrogens do I have on the reactant side? I've got two of them. How many oxygens? Two. On the, this side I've got two and one. All right, I can't start adding atoms here. So how do I turn this one into a two? I have to say to the reader, okay, I've got two H2O molecules. So I'm not changing the formula, I'm just changing my bookkeeping. Okay, I'm just changing my record keeping of how many hydrogen atoms I have. If I've got a 2 in front of H2O, that makes that a 4, and that makes that a 2. Now what do I need to do over here? Put a 2, Put a two here. And again, I'm not changing the formula. Think about this like accounting, right? If you're an accountant, you're not changing the value of the dollar. You're just keeping track of how many dollars you have, right? By putting a coefficient in your balance ledger, however you, your accountant does these job. You're doing the same thing here, okay? You're not changing the formula, you're just telling me how many of them you have. So think about a reactive product table, like your uh, accountant log, your, your ledger of how many atoms you have. Four and four, two and two. Does that make sense? All right, take a stab at these two. Make a reactive product table. If you have a blank that you don't use, you can either leave a blank or you can go <coughs> on it. Whatever makes you happy. But make sure
make sure you put your show your reactive product table. Because if your coefficient is wrong, I can see where you made your mistake. But if your coefficients are wrong and you don't show me your table, then you're not going to get any partial credit. So get in the habit of showing the reactive product table. It means aqueous. We'll get to that later on in the semester. Aqueous means dissolved. like a chemical accountant keeping records or a chemical auditor making sure that the total number of each atom on the reactants is equal to the products. You begin with nine chlorine atoms, you better end with nine chlorine atoms.
get as far as you can. Just like solving a puzzle, right? Alright, let's go over these. Four, three, two. Anyone need me to work that one out on the board? Yes? Yeah. So we've got Fe plus O2, Fe2O3. This is the reaction that takes place if you leave iron metal sitting outside and it rusts. Fe2O3 rust. Alright, so there's my reactants, there's my products. We've got Fe, and we've got O. We've got Fe. Oh, make sure you write them in the same order. How many irons do I have on the reactants? How many irons do I have on the products? Okay, oxygens, how many on the reactants? And how many on the products? Okay, so let's look at this. Let's balance, which one do you want to do first? You want to do what? You want to do which one? You want to do oxygen? Okay. Can I ever turn a 2 into a 3 or a 3 into a 2? No. There's no way I can do that. So what is the easiest thing to do? Make them both 6. six. Yeah. So what number do I need to put in front of O2 to make it a 6? A 3. So if I put a 3 right here, that makes that 6. And then what do I need to put in front of Fe2O3 to make this one a 6? Two. A 2. But I've got to distribute it to everybody. So what does iron become? 4. So what do I need to do now to balance iron? 4. So 4 in front of it. 4, 4. Check. 6, 6. Check. I'm done. All right, read me your coefficients from left to right for B. Two six two three. Two six two three. I agree. Anyone need to see that one worked out? You see that one worked out? Yeah. All righty. So we've got L plus H C O. Bubbles, you know that it was a okay. yes. 
dangerous reaction to be standing right next to. And balance it for me. We're just checking that picture to make sure to follow the law of conservation. Our secret. All right, let's get started again. So, sometimes you run into a scenario. 
scenario where you've got the same element appearing in more than one substance. And this is where things can get a little bit dicey if you're not watching what you're doing. So look at this one. We've got carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. And oxygen's also in this compound, O2. And then over here, oxygen is in this compound, and oxygen's in this compound. So, don't close the door away. So when we're writing our reactive product table, someone take a guess. Why did I write oxygen as 1 plus 2 instead of 3? Because you need to out on both sides. So you got to multiply the 1 by 2 on the left side. No, that's not it either. Any other guesses? That's the way it's set up on the If I put a 9 right here, how many oxygens should I change? How many oxygens would I have? 9. But, if, but when the, if I put a 9 right here, does it affect these oxygens in any way? No. No, they are in separate molecules. So if the same element appears in more than one molecule, you need to split them up. Because if I put a 9 right here, it affects these oxygens, but it does not affect these oxygens. Now, how come I wrote hydrogen as a 6? Because they're in the same molecule. Okay? Does everyone see why I can add those two together, but I cannot add those two together? Because if I put a 50 right here, it would affect these oxygens, but it would not affect these oxygens. Okay, so if the same atom appears in more than one molecule, you've got to split them up. Because a coefficient in front of one does not affect a coefficient in front of the other. So that's why we did the same thing over here. These two oxygens are completely independent of this one. If I put a 100 right here, it only affects these oxygens. It does not affect these oxygens. Yes? So would they like correspond to the order? Like the O2 would correspond to trying to equal out with the H2O? Well, you still want the, the total of oxygens on both sides to equal each other. Okay. You just want the sum. That's a good question. So that's where the 2 came from. That's where the 6 came from. That's where that one came from. That's where that two came from. One, two, two, and one. And so now, since I've got some oxygens that are split up, I want the sum of the oxygens on the reacting side to equal the sum of the oxygens on the product side. Because I've got oxygen in more than one substance. All right? So let's go through and balance this one. So let's start with, uh, we could do either the carbon or the hydrogen. I chose to balance carbon first. So what would I do to balance carbon? Put a 2 on the first, key on the left, right side. Okay. Does that change the oxygen? Yes. It changes this oxygen, but it does not change this oxygen. And now what do I need to do to balance the hydrogens? Multiply by 3. Where? Put a 3, put a three on the right side. Three times two the product two. side. On product. the product side. Yeah. Okay. So if I put a three right there, that gives me six. All right. Now I've got an interesting scenario. I've got seven oxygens here, because four plus three is seven, and I've got two plus one, three on this side. What's an easy way to solve this problem? All right. If I turn this into a six. 6 plus 1 is 7, and I have 7 on this side. So if I put a 3 in front of O2, that makes that a 6. And now the sum of my oxygens is 7, and the sum of my oxygens is 7. 2, 2, 6, 6, 7, 7. So I'm done. Take a second and... Uh, Digest that. Make sure you understand what's going on. Does 
everyone see how we did this one? The same atom is in more than one molecule. You have to split them up. You have to, have to, have to. So is it always better to leave if there's a one? What? Like you got atom, is it better to leave the one there and multiply the other one? You just, it depends on, on this. It's going to be unique each time you do it. Each reaction is going to work out every time. It's going to be different every time. You're going to have to just go with what makes sense for your particular reaction. All right. Let's take this one. You take a stab at that one. Make sure you're in the habit of showing your reactant product table so that if your coefficient is wrong, I can give you some partial credit. Yeah. Is the reactant product table necessary to get the full credit? If I say in the directions, show it, then yes. If I don't specify, then no. Because for really easy ones, I'm not going to require you to do it. But if I give you a challenging one, I want to see your table. Take another 10 seconds. Molecules. If 
If I put a coefficient here, it only affects these oxygens. It does not affect these oxygens. So if the same atom is in more than one molecule, split them up. All right, what do you want to do? C first. Okay, how do I do that? Two in front of the CO2. Okay, so that makes that two, and that makes that four. And now what? Multiply the hydrogen by two. So two on the two. Okay, so that makes that four. That makes that two. And now what? You gotta multiply the other, you get six, so you gotta multiply the other by three. Okay. Questions on this one? Does everyone see why we split those oxygens up? If you just wrote that as a three, and you, you have no way of knowing where those oxygens are. If the same atom is in more than one molecule, you've got to split them up. You've got to do it that way. Would you ever take points on, like, on the table with any if we was to not put those in order, like, on each side? Well, they would need to be in the same order on both sides for simplicity, but I would take points off oh. for it. All right, try this one. from left to right.
carbons. So let's put a three here and distribute that. Three times two is six. And let's balance the hydrogens. Let's put a four here. That makes that a four times two is eight. Four times one is four. All right, now I've got 10 on this side. So what should I put in front of oxygen? Five. That's five. Get it? that we split those up. Came from. 
Okay, let's say it again. We're ignoring this coefficient, okay? You with me? Are you with me on why we're ignoring this coefficient? Because if we put anything here, it's going to screw up everything I did over here. So we're going to leave this one alone. So I want some number that I can put right here that when I add it to 11, I get 18. Okay? So let this be x. Okay? There are two of them currently. So 2 times x is equal to 7. Because I want this number to become 7, right? 7 plus 11 equals 18. So if 2x equals 7, that means that x is just 7 divided by 2. So my fraction that I'm going to use is 7 halves. Are you ever going to have 7 halves of a molecule, though? No. No. So does anyone know how you get rid of a fraction? <laughs> you multiply the entire reaction by the denominator, 2. So if I multiply this whole monstrosity by 2, that changes my coefficients to 2, 7, 12, 12. And I double check my work, and my reactant table, my reactant product table still checks out. Can you leave it with a fraction, or do you, you want to leave it as a fraction? Get rid of it. Do not leave a fraction. You're not going to have 7 halves of a molecule. Get rid of it. Is it even possible right now? <laughs> you're not going to have seven halves of a person, you're not going to have seven halves of a molecule. So, so we so basically have to do something like that, so we use like quadratic, quadratic equations to kind of multiply that out. You don't need a quadratic equation at all. The way we got rid of the fraction was multiply the whole thing by the denominator. But in that like flip quadratic equation, you multiply the thing by the denominator? No. Quadratic equation is when you're solving for x in a equation that's got something squared. Okay, so we only use a fraction as a last resort. Okay, if you've got everything else balanced but that one pesky atom that just won't balance, that's when you're going to use a fraction. It's only a last resort. And then always multiply the whole reaction by the denominator to get rid of that fraction. I don't want to see any fractions in your final answer. I want you to get rid of them. And then always double check your reactant product table to make sure that when you got rid of that fraction, you didn't mess up. Go back and double check your work. And the fraction you want is as hard as it's going to get. So try this one. Maybe you need a fraction, maybe you don't. We'll find out.
good enough to read your coefficients? Two, seven, two, six. Do you agree? No, but I, I'm not 100% sure. I don't agree. Four, five, four, six. Four, five, four, six? Uh, okay, so we balance the nitrogen and the hydrogen. You didn't have to count for all mine either. Oh, <laughs> Are we in agreement on balancing nitrogen and hydrogen using two, two, and three? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, what's the pesky one that's out of whack here? Oxygen. So, we say to ourselves, what's a number times two that gives me five? Anyone want to read the coefficients? Two, seven, four, six. That'll work. Do you agree, Caleb? Yes. All right. I used seven halves as my fraction here. So when I use seven halves as my fraction, 
That gives me 2746. Thank you for your wonderful idea. I was going to duck away. 